Vocal Eye Almost Live Zoom, Punjabi Market Murals, hosted by Amy Amanti, with special guests Jag Nagra and Jaz Lali. And a big welcome to you all to this Vocal Eye Almost Live event. My name is Amy Amanti. Most of you know that. I use she, her pronouns. I'm also the associate director here at Vocal Eye. I'm your host for these almost live events and i'm a proud member of the blind community as tony said i'm a proud member of this family um, and i really do think of you all as as family um, you make my wednesday nights so much richer and my life richer in general when i see you at the theater we hang out or we're at a social for dinner or whatever so thank you all for for making the fabric of my life that much that much richer um, and, and I want to also extend a big thank you to you all for supporting Vocali, coming to these almost live events, coming to the theater and the live events, writing um, beautiful testimonial letters, making donations. We really, really appreciate that. If you happen to be somebody who is uh, watching us on our YouTube channel, you can also support us. You can uh, visit our website, www.vocali.ca. You can write testimonials as well. You can make donations as well. You can hit like and subscribe to our YouTube's YouTube channel. Uh, there's all sorts of ways that you can connect with us. Um, share our, in our information on your social medias. We are looking for folks to join. If you have blind folks in your community, Bring them to this online space because there's lots of fun that we have in this space. Vocalite is broadcasting to you all from the traditional and unceded or stolen lands of the Coast Salish peoples, in particular the Squamish, Musqueam and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. Now, folks may be wondering what the difference is between the various terms that are being used, like Indigenous, First Nations, Métis. So I thought maybe I'd share with you a little bit about what I have learned according to um, Queen's University. So according to Queen's University, who has a whole sort of document about different terminology and such, Indigenous is an umbrella term, uh, which includes First Nations, so that's both status and non-status. It includes Métis, and it includes Inuit. Indigenous refers to all of these groups, either collectively or separately, and is the term used in international contexts. For example, United Nations Declaration of the Rights of, of, Indi of Indi indigenous peoples. So it's used for uh, singular or groups and in uh, international contexts, right? So it's the umbrella term. Then there's the term First Nations. The term First Nations can be applied to individuals, but technically refers only to those who have, uh, they use the word Indian status under the Canadian law because that's the word that's used in Canadian law as part of a recognized community on a reserve but it is best to refer to the specific name of the community, such as the Squamish nation. So um, when we refer to Métis or Inuit people, you should never refer to them as First Nations because Métis and Inuit people are a very specific um, group of folks with different cultures and um, different social histories, which leads us to Métis, a specific indigenous group of folks in Canada with a very specific social history, and uh, this little tidbit under Queen's University says, until recently, they have not been regarded as, quote, Indians under the Canadian law and are never considered, quote, First Nations. The term Métis may be used as a singular or a plural and refers to individuals or groups. Inuit. Inuit is another um, term for a group, of his a group of Indigenous peoples historically located in the Arctic and legally and culturally distinct from First Nations or legally defined Indians and Métis. The singular of Inuit is Anuk. And because the, uh, I love this, because the translation of the word Inuit is people, Inuit means people, it is redundant to refer to people as Inuit people because you would be saying people people. So uh, they're just Inuit. Uh, and they do not like to be referred to as Eskimos. That is a word that is not used anymore. Um, it's considered a derogatory term. And I should note that also in this document, it says that some words used here are to be avoided in everyday language, such uh, as things like um, Indian and Aboriginal. Um, those words are used uh, in reference to government acts and, and with historical reference in mind. 
So uh, that's why they've been used. These the word Indian in this case is referring to the uh, Canadian Indian Act and those kinds of things. So not uh, language that we're invited to use as settler folks uh, for those who are settler folks, um, but uh, but has been used in Constitution and uh, and uh, the, the the Indian Act. Um, so there you go. I thought uh, I would share some of that with you all this evening, which happens to be Wednesday, July the 17th. It's 2024. And tonight we are proud to offer you our almost live event number 157. This is the descriptive highlights from the Punjabi market mural tour. We did this in person not so long ago, and now we're going to bring it here to the almost live space. And at Vocali, we greatly acknowledge the support of the Metro Vancouver's Regional Cultural Pro Project Grant Program for making our descriptive tours possible this season, both online and in person. So with all of that housekeeping done and those special announcements made, I'd like to welcome Jag Nagra and Jazz Lally to the space. Welcome friends. Hi, Amy. Hello, hello. Thanks for having us here today. Excuse me. I'm gonna catch my breath. I swallowed the wrong way. Sorry, how are we? How are we? I'm good. Yeah, good. I'm uh, excited to uh, talk about Punjabi market today. I'm excited uh, to be here with everyone and hopefully everyone's staying cool. Um, hopefully we have fans blowing on us, AC blowing on us. I can't see them, can't even hear them. So kudos to you. Amazing. Or maybe it's kudos to Zoom for keeping the ambient noise <laughs> at bay, right? Exactly. Um, so maybe I'll start um, some folks who were on the actual walking tour with us all a couple weeks ago um, know you all mm. because you uh, hosted us on this tour and then hosted us in the restaurant where we enjoyed some samosas and some chai. I learned not to call it chai tea because I would be calling it tea tea. Exactly. <laughs> so masala chai. Um, still learning that. But um, so Give us maybe a little bit of background on um, each of you so we can get to know you in the space and uh, learn a little bit about you. Who wants to start? Uh, I can start, uh, I'll go first. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Jag Nagra. Um, with Punjabi Market, I am the new chair uh, of our nonprofit. Uh, I actually um, started as a director. <clears throat> so through art, um, I, I got involved. Uh, I'm a visual artist outside of my nonprofit work. Um, I've done uh, the very first uh, Canucks uh, Diwali jerseys in 2021. Uh, and I've done a number of uh, public art projects um, throughout Metro Vancouver. And a big part of what I do these days through my art practice is kind of reconnecting with my uh, Punjabi roots for the first time uh, in a, you know, in a meaningful way. Um, and that only started about five years ago, uh, thanks in, you know, large part uh, to Punjabi market. Um, and, you know, how I got involved, uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Um, but there are street signs in Punjabi market um, that are kind of iconic in our community. Uh, they were the first street signs that had Punjabi text on them. Um, and I had drawn those as part of an art project uh, several years ago. And I posted them on Instagram and hashtagged it with Punjabi Market. And somebody named Gulzar Nanda messaged me one night, really excited to have found art about this neighborhood. Uh, and he wanted to meet up for coffee. And we did. And he um, shared with me like plans to revitalize this historical neighborhood. And we're going to talk a lot about that in our, in our tour today um, and why it needs revitalization. Um, but that's when I got involved in 2019, or that's how I got involved through, you know, this one little picture I had drawn. And because of that, um, I have found that I'm, uh, I've kind of made Punjabi friends for the first time in my life. Um, I've connected or felt like a sense of pride about our culture for the first time. And all of my art now is a direct, um, you know, uh, window into the intersections of my identity where I honestly spent, I, I just turned 40 uh, two months ago and I had spent 35 years of my life pretending I wasn't Punjabi and pretending, you know, I would spend so many years straightening my hair. Um, I have, you know, thick curly hair that's very hard to maintain. And I just tried to hide so much of myself away. And so now um, as a result of this neighborhood, I've just kind of, I feel like I've come home 
to myself in many ways. Um, but yeah, so all the public art, all the different initiatives I do involve um, giving back to community and uh, honoring my roots. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I'll let Jazz introduce herself and then we'll kind of go into uh, what Punjabi market even is, right? I don't know if everyone has stepped foot in Punjabi market before, so we'll talk a lot about that today. That sounds Thank great. You. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. It was beautiful to hear you speak these words. And I know I've heard it a few times, but each time I take away something different and I just have to say, yes, I feel the same way. <laughs> yes, the fire, it's like lit now. Um, so similar, uh, so... Hello, everyone. So happy to be in this space and so excited to share with you what we're doing at Punjabi Market with the murals and everything else that's going on. But uh, my name is Jazz Lally and I am a art historian and curator and community builder. Outside of the Punjabi market, um, I am an uh, independent curator, so I've worked at multiple galleries within Vancouver, um, and I've kind of been in more behind the scenes helping because uh, in the institutions that I've worked at, they've pre predominantly been um, white cube focused. So it was a lot about like Western art. Um, and I wasn't really able to uh, express or find the connection to my community uh, while I was working there. My dissertation's on lace, so I don't know how far away we can get from there uh, in my practice. But it was really, and so I've been learning and building my knowledge, but never found a place to fully express um, the ideas and the knowledge and just the joy and happiness that I find in South Asian art um, until I um, met Jag independently of the Punjabi Market Collective and asked Jag to do a talk for one of the boards that I was on. And then kind of from there, I started making connections and it was in 2021. Um, I remember this meeting that I had with Jag and Gulzar on on a hill um, in at Sunset Community Center, and they had just formed the board, and they were looking for new board members to come on um, to help them uh, the, during the inaugural uh, murals for the market in 2021. And they they asked me, and I don't even think that they got the question out fully, and I just said yes right away. Um, and from that moment, I knew that this is what my purpose was: reconnecting with not only my community, the, my heritage. Um, and saying that, yes, we can take up space. Yes, we we can be heard. And, and yes, we can talk about this openly and um, and be in a safe space to do so. And so I'm eternally grateful for that meeting on the Hill um, and for the work now that I've been able to fully passionately uh, give myself all to. So, yeah. Thank That's you it. both for sharing that. <clears throat> Yeah, thanks, Jazz. Um, so let's, uh, I guess, let's talk about what Punjabi Market even is or where it is. So it's in uh, Vancouver on Main Street uh, between 48 and 51st Avenues. And so it's three blocks. And, you know, for people like my parents, uh, my grandparents, this was the neighborhood where you would find a sense of community. Um, the very first Indian shop opened on May 31st, 1970. And that was called Shan Saris. And that was opened up, up by a, a husband and wife, uh, Sutja Singh Claire and Harban Skor Claire. And, you know, at the time when people would come to Canada, uh, they would sort of be forced to wear Western clothing, right? There was no uh, space where they could wear their traditional Punjabi or Indian clothing. And so they decided to open up a shop. Um, a lot of people kind of doubted them, like who's going to wear Indian clothes walking along Main Street. And they said, let's try and see what happens. And, you know, it took all it took was one shop, one couple to have this idea and more and more South Asian businesses started opening up on that strip. Um, and in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, this neighborhood was uh, booming. It was um, a place for people to find sense of community. It was more than just shopping, right? Um, and if you, if you think about now, uh, I could go to Surrey and there is so much more competition. There are so many more stores. Uh, I can order everything online, like especially with the uh, with COVID, people were ordering their Indian bridal wear through WhatsApp, right? Just placing orders in India, getting it shipped to them. Um, back then, Main Street uh, in South Van was the only place you could get gold jewelry, um, like Indian traditional gold jewelry, uh, bridal wear, spices, and Indian foods. So 
that's where everybody would go. Um, and then ever since the 2008 recession, there's been a huge decline in the neighborhood. Um, a lot of shops have closed um, for various reasons. Some have moved to Surrey for, uh, you know, cheaper rents. Um, and, and they've just kind of moved to where the, you know, um, the population is. Um, not that there isn't a big South Asian population anymore in South Van, but, uh, you know, it's, maybe it's more competitive in Surrey. So they've kind of moved there. And what we were noticing was um, Punjabi market sort of became this ghost town. There would be no one uh, shopping anymore. Um, a lot of the businesses, it was just kind of, even when we started in 2019, the neighborhood looked really run down. And uh, what we didn't want to happen was we didn't want it to just get gentrified um, and forgotten and erased um, as so much of the South Asian history here in Vancouver and BC has already been erased. So we thought, you know, now's the time to try to revitalize this neighborhood, make sure that people don't forget. Um, and Jazz, you can share kind of your uh, upbringing, but like if I can touch a little bit about mine, um, I grew up in Maple Ridge. So we would come once or twice a year to Punjabi Market with my parents and, you know, all my cousins. And as a kid, I didn't have much say. So we would just follow the adults from shop to shop, listening to them bartering. Um, and we would always eat at Himalaya restaurant, which is still there. And so these memories I had as a child are what brought me back to this neighborhood as an adult, um, you know, and I'm able to give back. And I feel like in many ways, I'm kind of uh, feeding the soul of my five-year-old self, right? When I go back there and I'm able to help do the work. And um, Jazz, maybe that's something you can also touch on, like what what we are, how we are revitalizing the neighborhood and through, you know, what lens and um, that kind of stuff. But I'll let you kind of share where we're taking Punjabi market now. But I also think that you should tell the story of Jaya and Akash also following you now. And yes. yeah. yeah, great point. Um, I have two kids uh, with my wife. Uh, they're six and three years old. And every time I, I, I live in Pitt Meadows now, so it's a little bit of a trek out there. But every time I'm getting ready to go, they want to come with me to Punjabi market, right? They they know, you know, we've done different art installations over the years. They want to go to see the our Mary Gold tree that was there. Um, they want to see the art. Like they're just so familiar and comfortable in that space. And it's really kind of a full circle thing. And they're a huge part of my inspiration for not wanting the neighborhood to get gentrified and erased. Because I want them to be able to be adults walking down this neighborhood one day, um, you know, being able to tell my story or my parents story and their own so yeah no and I think what Jack touches on this community building and this intergenerational connection to the market is very important because I too as a child would follow my mom into all the shops and my aunts and make a big shopping day and I would go only for the weekend for a few hours but there came a time where yeah everything moved to Surrey so I did not step into Punjabi market probably until like 2020 2021 even um and so I think the memories that we as a collective want to make now and, and build community are participatory so that's why doing festivals and street activations and the murals and, and guided visits and tours is that so the families can come down together and have these moments and share these experiences rather than just been like just us following our parents around and most importantly eat all the food because those are one mm. of my fondest memories um um and sensory experiences as well of the gold guppe at all India sweets, which sadly is no longer there. So you can see that how the change has already happened, happened already. So, yeah. Jag, I think we want to move on to the first image. Yeah, I think that's, let's do that. Let's um, go through some of the, the initial photos of the neighborhood and onto the murals. Yeah, sounds great. Um, so this first image that we have here, um, this was taken in June 1993. Uh, so this photograph shows two workers. Uh, they're wearing safety vests. Uh, they're standing on a ladder and they're wearing yellow uh, hard hats. And what they're doing is installing street signs onto the lamp pole. And uh, I'll, I'll describe what the sign actually looks like. These signs are still in Punjabi market. Um, so they're circular signs that are uh, a marigold yellow color. Uh, the upper arch says Punjabi market in English. And what's really unique is the bottom arch actually says Punjabi market in Punjabi, in Gurmukhi script. And I think, uh, like I mentioned, uh, 
in my introduction, these were the first bilingual street signs that went up uh, outside of India. So they're really significant. Um, and, and then across uh, the entire sign is a black band that has a street. Uh, so this particular one says East 49th Avenue. Now, when, oh, sorry. Question, what's the significance of the marigold color? Yeah, um, so I we're actually trying to find out who designed these. We don't have that story quite uh, pieced together. But marigold, uh, marigolds, the flowers themselves are often used in all kinds of festivities uh, across South Asia, really, right? So uh, they'll be at temples, they'll be, you know, if if you're having a wedding, often people will uh, hang uh, like strands of marigold flowers. So it's kind of a, a very um, festive color. It has a lot of importance uh, in the community. And uh, I, I suspect that's why that color was chosen. But uh, one day we will have that part of the puzzle kind of pieced together. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Mimi, you asked um, last time we met where the marigolds like started and originated yeah. actually in the Americas. That's where they started and I guess traveled um, into India and then brought over to this side. Okay. Right. Yeah. And these street signs went up uh, in 1993, but there was a lot of... Uh, backlash from folks uh, who weren't Punjabi, right? Um, even just getting this neighborhood designated as Punjabi market came with a lot of racism. Uh, it was, uh, the motion was uh, rejected by Vancouver City Council a few times. Uh, so it wasn't easy for our elders to advocate for this neighborhood. Uh, I'm glad they did because I think it's important for different communities to be able to take up space in the city. Um, so yeah, that's a, a really important piece. And uh, this this was a street sign that I had drawn as part of a completely unrelated project. And that's how I, I came to join the Punjabi Market Collective. And I yeah. think that's important as well, these um, bilingual signs going up, they become, as Jack said, markers of the area. So if you're navigating through the streets, you can you know where you are. Um, and I think that's also where this idea of continuing that um, these markings uh, came from as well as inspiration from the original signs. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we can go to the uh, next image and then, um, yeah, if, if, and if we need to talk about the signs later, I'm sure the uh, conversation will come up again. We can touch on those. So Steph, we can move on to the next image. Perfect. So in this, uh, so this photo was taking, taken in Punjabi market in the early 80s and shows a large crowd gathered in the middle of a the street. They're wearing traditional Indian clothes and Western 80s era clothing. So similar to what Jake had talked about, uh, uh, access of clothing. At the center of the crowd is a parade float with scalloped arches. In the background, there are one and two story high retail buildings. And this is uh, the Nagar Kirtan. Uh, which is a celebration that um, is a processional celebration and we sing holy hymns and it's a parade or a, a procession through the streets. Uh, fun fact, the first Nether Kitan was held by the Khalsa Dwan Society in Vancouver in 1979. So this also demonstrates how Punjabi market as Jag had also touched upon, was not only a place to gather for festivals, but it was really to gather every day, come be with community and feel where uh, feel in a space where you belong. Um, and it was interesting to learn while we're doing research uh, about the kind of how the community came to Main uh, Street area. And this is because uh, the community followed, the early South Asian um, individuals followed the lumber industry, so the mills, which the first mill was in Kitsilano, so that's where the first settlement of South, the South Asian diaspora happened. And then when the mill moved down the Fraser River to Southwest Marine, that's where the second hub kind of started to take place and Main Street became the central hub um, for the folks in the community. The Nagar Kirtan is annually celebrated in April, uh, so and and goes through Punjabi Market as well. So if you feel like attending, everyone is welcome, um, and uh, lots of food and colors. And as we touch upon the marigolds, that orange yellow color um, is symbolic of the Nagar Kirtan as well. And and Jazz, um, when you talked about uh, Kitsilano, right? That was where the first Sikh Gurdwara was on West Second Avenue. 
Uh, that's actually no longer there. Uh, once they sold that land, they built in South Van. But the, the you know, uh, point of like heartache, I guess you could say, is where the Gordwara was, there's now just a very small plaque in front of a um, apartment building, right? All our history there is is erased essentially like no one thinks of Kitsilano as being a South Asian hub by any means in 2024 and that's what we don't want for Punjabi market right I don't want to take my kids and show them a sign where Punjabi market used to be so that's what we're trying to do um and there's just such a rich history and often I think it's it's only three blocks in this huge city like it, it shouldn't be so hard to advocate for this neighborhood um but it has been unfortunately and uh yeah but we're we're making great strides with our um nonprofit we we've been um working with different levels of government we have a great relationship with the city of Vancouver and yeah it feels like people are invested now it feels like there's a lot of community uh momentum building and we're we're just really excited uh for all the different initiatives we've been able to bring to main street and i think also it's important to note that the collective is uh, continuing this tradition of community building. So we're working with other South Asian um, collectives and organizations to bridge ourselves together to create that stability um, that perhaps might that perhaps might have been lost because of um, the moves, right, to the Surrey and other locations. And so I think that's also important and maintaining these important relationships and bringing everyone through to the market as much as we can uh, to uh, be in that space and feel that energy. Okay. So I think this is a good time to transition into the mural. Um, so we have over the past three years, we've completed eight murals, worked with nine artists from various disciplines and backgrounds. And so the first mural that we're going to talk about is a welcome mural. And who better to describe the mural than the artist herself? So Jag, let's talk about your mural. Why don't we uh, have that picture up? Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so this uh, mural is called Jiyayanu, and that uh, translates to welcome. So often, you know, it's kind of a respectful way of welcoming someone into one's home. Um, this went up in 2022. Um, so this mural, so here, you know, we've been talking about gentrification and it's it's bad and everything, and uh, it changes the landscape of Punjabi market. And ironically, this mural sits on the side of Tim Hortons at Main and 49th, which is kind of the heart of Punjabi market. It's the busiest intersection that we have. Um, and yeah, so, you know, that's kind of ironic. However, the developers, we have a great relationship with them. Uh, they've had us do two murals on their building. So it's uh, kind of great. Um, my mural actually isn't painted. Uh, it was I had designed it on my computer, like I had drawn it on pen and paper, digitized it on my computer, and then it was printed on huge vinyl stickers, essentially, and uh, put onto the installed onto the wall. At the background of this mural is a dark blue color. Um, at the center, it says, Welcome to Punjabi Market. And Punjabi Market is written in a text that's uh, red and pink. It's white text, sorry, white text with red and pink shadow behind it to create a 3D illusion. Below that, it says Punjabi market in Gurmukhi script, again, which is the Punjabi script. On the bottom left of the mural, there's a brown skin hand wearing gold bracelets and ring gold rings on each finger. And that hand is holding one single rose, a red rose with a green stem. Uh, the hand also has henna on the fingers, um, and above the hand, there's a marigold flower, a portion of it um, that you see in the top corner. Um, in the top right corner, there's a teal and yellow and orange peacock that is facing left. Um, there's also a star anise, which is an Indian spice um, in, the in the top corner using reds and pinks. Throughout the mural, there are leaves and floral patterns. 
Uh, and this mural, because it's printed on vinyl, it's highly reflective. So even in uh, the dark wintry months, uh, it's highly visible to people driving by or walking by. And so the reason um, I chose the different elements, like the uh, hand wearing gold jewelry or the marigold flowers, the spices, it was all to pay uh, kind of homage to the different businesses that have been in the market. So at the height of Punjabi market, um, over the three block stretch, there were 24 gold jewelry businesses. And that goes to show you how in demand that was, right? Like everybody was coming here uh, to get their bridal sets. Often people gift gold jewelry to their daughters um, or to family members. So 24 shops in three blocks is pretty significant. Um, also in 2020, we had uh, done a art installation at Main and 51st where we uh, hung up over 200 marigold strands. Each strand was... Um, five feet long and we had over 200 of those strands in a tree so that's why I drew the marigold flower that's shown in the top corner we had done that uh art installation during covid when every you know everything was kind of feeling really everyone was feeling kind of down uh there wasn't a lot of there was a lot of fear still so we wanted to kind of give some light and try to bring business back into the market. You know, if people came to see the art installation, they might frequent some of the shops because COVID really hit the businesses hard. And for those that were already struggling, it was, you know, uh, just even a harder time. Uh, there's a, a business in Punjabi market still called Punjab Food Center. And when you walk in the very first, when you walk in through the doors, first you see the produce section and the aisle, if you continue walking down the aisle to the back, it's a wall full of packaged spices and the aromas hit you as you walk through. And so um, that that shop is owned by, uh, we call him Thur Uncle. His name's Harinder Thur. He's been there since the 80s. Um, and, you know, everyone had, you know, my parents certainly have memories of going to that shop, um, being able to get their spices back in the day. Uh, my mom still remembers how much meat cost. It's a random fact. She told me when we were celebrating our 50th anniversary, I was trying to ask my parents for stories of Punjabi market. And she's like, oh, meat cost $1.35. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do with this information? <laughs> but that now I have that in my head. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to, I, I have cardamom seeds, cardamom pods I've drawn in the bottom left corner as well to kind of pay homage to his shop. Um, so this is my kind of thank you to the the market and a way for people to see it. And, you know, aside from those signs that we talked about, the bilingual signs, there's not really a huge marker showing people where Punjabi market is. And Jazz and I often lead tours. You know, we do field trips with uh, young students, uh, elementary, high school students, um, university students. Often the feedback we get is like, oh, I drive down 49th all the time and I had no idea any of the significance here because, you know, you see Tim Hortons at Main and 40, 49th here. Um, it, it kind of that historical significance visually kind of disappears. So we wanted to make sure there was a huge, uh, you know, welcome feature there of, of, of sorts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jazz, Jazz, I don't know if you have any other things to add to this one. Oh, that's just brilliant. I feel like this mural is also a great backdrop. If you're visiting and you want to take a picture in Punjabi Market, this is probably like one of the most Instagrammable non-mural murals that we have in the market. And I think that's what's so special about these murals is because the stories that the artists and the individuals have with their own murals and their own memories of Punjabi Market. And that really resonates through when we speak about it. And, um, you know, uh, Punjabi culture being such a strong oral, oral tradition, these histories are being passed down now, uh, not only through the storytelling that Jag and I are doing, but also the murals as markers in the space. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Awesome. All right. Where are we going next? If we were walking on the tour, where would you take us next? We're going to walk to the second mural, which is Diamond Points, the blue one, Steph. So whenever you're ready. Perfect. Yeah, so this is the um, Diamond Points mural called Interconnected and was painted in 2021. This mural is 32 feet wide by 15 feet tall. 
there's different shades of dark and light blues, teals, and whites as a color palette. This is a Coast Salish artwork featuring an abstracted three-strand braid that's made up of stylized waves of water intertwined with salmon among the waves. All of the salmon are facing right and are flowing with the waves of the water in almost unison form. This mural uses shapes that are synonymous with uh, Coast Salish art forms, including U-shapes, crescents, and um, trigons. Can you maybe just describe to us what the U-shape and the trigon shape is, just so we have an idea? So the U-shape, if you um, hold up your thumb and um, index finger, um, you can f form the U. We can follow the inside of your hand like that into a U. And that would be painted like a like a thick or a thin black line? Yes. Yeah, okay. And then the crescent is half moon shape. So that's also painted with thick and thin blue color lines. Mm -hmm. And the triagons are these really interesting shapes. They almost look like they're triangles. Um, and they normally point in one direction or uh, to help uh, create flow within the form itself. Amy, I think that's is that what you would say a trigon? I, I, I don't know. I don't see it the way that you, <laughs> you do. But uh, yeah, I've been kind of been told that it's a it's a triangle. And then I guess if you imagine because a triangle has um, straight edges, but this has curved edges. So um I'm going to say it's like a Doritos chip almost, how it curves in the middle. Yeah, that's a good one. Maybe. That's a great description. But, but a little more curved than that. Yeah. And, and the points, the three points are kind of elongated. So it's not really like three walls. Uh, each of the points kind of stem out or branch out. Yeah. Okay. So we're thank so happy. No, thank you, Amy, for that. We're so happy that we're able to work with Diamond Point, who's a contemporary Coast Salish artist and member of the Musqueam band. She grew up um, in on the reserve in Point uh, uh, yeah, Grey. This was actually it was so exciting that this was her first mural. So it was really lovely to see her progression and growth while she was doing the mural. And um, her dad came and helped her and her friends came and helped her as well. The... This um, mural is important for the land that it rests on, right? That it's placed in Punjabi market. And really, we want to, at PMC, we want to value and honor um, the histories of the Musqueam people and the history that is in the area and remind folks that, you know, before that this was designated Punjabi market, it was, it has always been Musqueam land. And that's what we've, we've done uh, other projects as such as banners with diamond point as well to create those oral stories and continue those um, oral histories within the market and the lens that we are on. And Jazz, and just, just sorry, just before we continue, I just want to make sure we know what we're looking at here, which is, so we, we know what trigons and the U-shapes are, but like, what is this? Are these fish? Are these? So uh, these are salmon. Salmon, okay. They're intertwined um, with braids three braids okay the color palette is light blue dark blue and some teals and some white as well um and, and so are they because they seem to be kind of cluttered together to me and i in my brain i feel like they're salmon now that you've told me they're salmon like swimming upstream kind of idea is that seem yeah. sort yeah. of yeah. what it looks yes. like yeah, I, I would say sort of if you imagine uh, your hair being braided, so there's three strands, but it's the there's uh, water and the salmon kind of intertwined all together. Oh, OK. Well, I essentially, it. it would be, uh, you know, a, a school of salmon swimming together uh, in this flowing water. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And this intertwinedness is quite important because diamond um, and the connection diamond really want to um look at how we are all interconnected, right? How we all share our stories together and how we all uh, come together to help each other. And I feel like that's really reminiscent of how she made the mural and um, what is happening in the market and how uh, it started as well. 
and most importantly, interconnected to family and relationships and honoring the history of the Pacific location. And then the stream part is really interesting because diamonds not only depicted the salmon, possibly like Amy mentioned, going upstream or flowing in one direction. Jag has a really interesting story that the um, Orr family was uh, able to share uh, with her when the before the mural even came up. Jag, did you want to tell us about that story? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so this, the mural uh, is actually on the same building as my mural, um, and it's owned by Orr Development. That family has been in, you know, this neighborhood since before it was even Punjabi market, like they owned buildings, we have photos from the 60s and whatnot. Um, and after we painted Diamond's mural, uh, we had asked uh, Jackson and China Orr, their siblings who are part of the company, we asked them to come down to see the completed mural and for us to take a photo with them, right? Like kind of a photo shoot. After we did all the photos, they said, hey, I want to show you something. And they opened up one of the doors in the garage and they took me into this uh, like utility room and they lifted up uh, like the metal grate, um, like the manhole cover. Um, they lifted that up and they showed me that water is still streaming underground. Uh, which is really uh, significant, right? Like before there were roadways here uh, on Main Street, it was uh, a stream or river, right? And so that water is still down there. And that was, uh, I kind of caught my breath. And that was something that they had shared with Diamond during the consultation period, right? Because when we paint murals, we don't just have artists go and paint whatever they want. We have, Jazz has been our curator um, all three years, and she's helped facilitate conversations between the landlords and the artists. So they had mentioned that to Diamond, and she, that's the reason she has this, you know, stream of water and the salmon there. So it was really amazing to, I, I have a video on one of my old phones, um, which I need to find, but that was, was such a cool thing almost directly underneath her mural is where that would be. So uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite stories to tell. It's all and I, I, Yeah, it's all, yeah, yeah, it's all connected. I love it. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Mm. So right. walking on our journey, we come to the next mural, which is? Yes, uh, our next mural uh, was also painted in 2021 by a seasoned mural artist, Sandeep Johal. I think she's done uh, upwards of like 40 to 50 murals now across the city and in other cities across Canada. Um, and what was really great uh, about Sandeep, uh, I'll describe the art, uh, but it, what was really great is that she had so much experience uh, already with murals. So she was able to kind of mentor the other artists uh, who were all kind of new to painting such large scale murals. Um, so this mural uh, is 37 feet wide by 9.5 feet tall. The background is an orange marigold color. Um, at, and at the center of the mural, there are two pink arches with a leaf pattern with scalloped edges. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, I'm just reading this. Leaf pattern with scalloped edges and a dark blue center. Inside each archway is a yellow pedestal with circles and squares stacked on top of each other to form a peak. These shapes on the pedestals represent Indian sweets like laddu and barfi. The color of these shapes are blues, yellows, pinks, and reds. And the sweets have decorative patterning on them in floral geometric patterns and a cashew on top of the squares. Directly below each arch is a band of alternating pattern of diamonds in light and dark blue. And between the two arches is a black and white bird that's flying and facing to the right. Beside the arch on the right side is a black and white peacock. On the outer edges of the mural are three flowers with white stems and leaves. And the flower portion is made up of an orange spiral segment similar to an orange. And those are actually uh, a depiction of real uh, sweets that are called Amrti and they're made in-house at Himalaya restaurant, which is where Diamond, uh, sorry, Sandeep's mural is painted. And so again, when we were having conversations 
between the landlord or business owner and Sandeep and Jazz, like they were sharing how significant the suites are at the restaurant. And Amy, you know, you were you were there that day after our walking tour. We had lunch there. Um, they have a huge uh, at the center of the restaurant. There's a huge kind of display table. Um, it's quite long with all kinds of suites in there. And often, you know, we have uh, Diwali, we have Vasakhi, there's different uh, Indian celebrations. Uh, you know, those at that time, those tables are stacked with sweets. So that was something really important to them and uh, to kind of the success of their business. Um, another fun story that I like to share, um, we lived in Surrey in the 80s and there were no sweet shops out there. My dad had to go to Victoria for a family function. And so he drove from Surrey to Himalaya restaurant in Punjabi market. Uh, he had pre-ordered 20 pounds of jalebis. And he took all those boxes, put them in the trunk of his car and took the ferry across uh, to Victoria. And, you know, that's where all the guests could have have the sweets. So that, you know, that I, I'm sure every family has a similar kind of story like this. Mm -hmm. um, it is, you know, a restaurant as well. Uh, every time I go there, I still only order what I ate as a kid uh, because I'm, again, feeding my childhood self. Um, I can't bring myself to order anything else. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's it, this this restaurant has been such a important part of Punjabi markets history. Like there have been so many first dates there. Um, often, you know, uh, with arranged marriages, you know, if you want to have the families meet each other ahead of time and uh, people would bring their families, let's meet at Himalaya restaurant. Uh, it's also known as Pablas because that was the family's last name. So let's meet at Pablas. Um, so it's such an important part um, of the landscape of Punjabi market. And the building itself has gone through a lot of changes over the years. But that constant on that corner at Main and 50th, that restaurant hopefully is there uh, for years to come still. And in some of our research, um, Gulzar on our team, he was actually trying to find, uh, he thinks it is the longest, how do I say this, the longest standing Indian restaurant in uh, Canada. Um, so, you know, it's 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 been around since 1972, I think they opened. So, yeah. And when, when you know, you look at this mural, obviously what stands out is the bright, vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. um, and the sweets to me are like, uh, they're on these pedestals, like a, like a cake stand almost. Okay. Um, and in these archways, it's kind of like a window. It's like a presentation window. Yes. With these sweets on cake stands. And all they're saying to you is, come and eat me. <laughs> <laughs> come and eat me. Um, and even the one that you were talking about that looks like an orange segment, Yes. Um, kind of reminds me of this theme of the marigolds again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And actually, Jazz has a. I think Jazz, you and Sandeep got a tour uh, at the back. I've never been in the back of the restaurant, but maybe you can share about the significance of why Sandeep painted those Amrti. Yeah. So, um, when Sandeep was drawing inspiration for this mural, the the title of the mural is called "A Love Letter to Mithyai," and that's like a love letter to sweets and. This was one of her core memories as well. She grew up in Kelowna. And so coming down to Punjabi Market, they, her family would stock up in these like heaps of sweets that were piled along the windows. And so that's what she wanted in her nostalgic ways to commemorate her experiences and core memories of Punjabi Market. And so I think without even knowing, she instinctively was drawn to these orange, yellow seg or orange segmented sweets that are called Amrti, which fun fact is they're gluten free because they're made with lentil um, and not flour. And so um, we were in the back and uh, Manny, uh, one of the owners and brothers who runs a restaurant now, showed us and how labor intensive they are because each segment is piped into a vat of, a vat of oil and layered on top of each other and stacked to quite thick um, uh, sweets. And actually, he told us that the sweet Amrti um, is only made at his restaurant and his brother's restaurant in Richmond because it's so labor intensive. Um, and a lot of other restaurants actually come to them to buy uh, this one particular sweet. Can we sell it? Yes. Uh, so yeah. what, what do they taste like? What's your favorite sweet and what does it taste like? Just describe it. 
my probably my favorite sweet is probably a glob jamun, which is like um it's a round uh like a timbit sized donut, but it's deep fried and it's like I don't know like put in it, a, it's kind of just like a syrup it covered in it so when you bite into it it's soft you know, it's soft, but it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and, and is it made out of like a cake kind of batter or flour batter yeah yeah and um it's called glob jamun and it's like rose and so originally they would put, um i guess sweet makers would put a bit of rose oil in mm -hmm. it so now we're coming up to another like sensation of like we've got marigolds and we've got rose yeah so it was very connected to nature and, and the spices um and what was we're able to grow yeah and jag what's your favorite sweet Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think uh, probably jalebi is my favorite. It's similar to the amrithi. It's, um, I call it, if I have to describe it in the simplest terms, like deep fried sugar syrup, I guess. Uh, but it's fried in, it's kind of put in a piping bag again. And, um, you know, they'll, the sweet makers will swirl it into the oil and, and fry it. And then once that's kind of cooked, They'll take it out um, with a strainer and put it into a sugary mixture. So it gets coated in sugar. It's delicious. Uh, yeah. My favorite way to eat it is like dipped in hot ja and take a bite. It is delicious. Highly recommend. Next time you're in South Van, please go. Uh, yeah, try sample their sweets when you go there. Be warned. Like it needs to be a, a destination. Yeah, I have to be careful when we take my three-year-old because he just, his hands are just going to this sweet case. And the thing is like underneath the the sweets, the, um, it's kind of self-serve. So they have the boxes, they have tongs, and you can take whatever you want uh, when you're ready to buy. You just, you know, they'll weigh it for you and charge you by weight. So my son doesn't realize the concept of that. And he'll just, he want it, a few times you've had to like grab him mid air and take him back and say, you can't touch that with your bare hands. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause once you touch it, it's yours. Yeah. Exactly. Well, maybe he knows that. That's the plan. He's <laughs> the plan. Up his... Tricky, oh, tricky, okay. tricky. Yeah. Uh, so inspired. Or gookie. Yeah. Um, awesome. Shall we show the next mural? Yes. yes. All right. Let's bring that one up, Steph. Perfect. Thank you, Steph. So uh, this mural is by uh, Manal Hill Bakari and Mastal Lee Raj, and it's called Shahi Torka, and um, it was one of the first murals as well in 2021. So this mural is 33 feet wide by 19 feet tall, and the mural is meant to represent the interior of a northern Indian palace and creates a 3D, there's a 3D illusion of a floor walls and ceiling all co converging towards the center. The image shows a stylized abstracted room with a strong geometric pattern. The floor has a black and white zigzag pattern. The walls are decorated with repetitive shapes. The left wall has a pattern of green fan-like shapes on an orange background and the right wall has a pattern of orange shapes similar to a pinched oval on a green background. The back wall features a red and black diamond pattern with a dark arch doorway in the center. The ceiling has green rays um, emanating from the back wall. The perspective of the room creates a sense of depth, making it look like a 3D space. Yeah, you almost feel like you could walk through this mural and into that doorway. Yeah, it's very inviting. Even though it's a flat wall. And similar to what, um, Amy, you mentioned about Zend Deep's mural being bright and vibrant, the color here on this mural is traditional of northern Rajasthani area of India. The colors are muted. They're more earth tones as well. And most importantly, the motifs um, that we mentioned, they mimic Indian jewelry design. Um, and this mural happens to be on the back wall of one of uh, jewelry stores that's located in Punjabi market. And 
but but the name of the mural is not of a jewelry piece it's actually named after our dessert um so i feel like this whole food is really really heavy in punjabi market um and it was really lovely when um mastali and manali hill were painting um the mural their um their partners and so they both have this really heavy design aesthetic backgrounds. Manal Hill also uh, makes jewelry and Mistali is a graphic designer. He says he is a, a rectangle in a square living in a triangle or something. So you can see that why these shapes oh. and shapes are so important to his practice, actually both of their practices. And it was really lovely for them to work with um, the auntie, Darshna auntie, who owns the shop and really have these conversations of like, you know, what is it that you want um, on your wall? And how do you want your shop to be kind of represented or this part of the market to be representative, represented? And so I feel like, you know, making these connections and speaking to the shop owners and and just like going through. And we have to also say that, um, you know, a lot of the community members in Punjabi market, the landowners, building and shop owners, hadn't really uh, like partake, participated in art before. And so I feel like there's also a lot of learning and education and slow communication and just like having these amazing conversations and, and learning moments with everyone in Punjabi market, say what is contemporary art? What is traditional art? How can we blend the two together to make something really special? And right. I feel this mural is a real a prime example of everything coming together, uh, like traditional but contemporary at the same time. Talk to us a little bit about the uh, I don't know the stuff that's on the wall, the mechanics, the piping, and the electrical and grating. How do they incorporate that stuff into the mural? But that's a fab question because I think the artists themselves also had trouble <laughs> with all this extra bits that are on the wall, and perhaps they that's why they came to this concept of you know how Amy said everything's converging to the center it's creating this 3d effect and so they use this illusion um and these perspectives to cover up all the pipes and the grating and, and the live electrical wire that's hanging on the top as well and really make sure that you're not seeing those bits you're just seeing the zigzagging pattern the fan-like shapes and most importantly that central arch um that's black and they say that uh, the artist placed this archway in the center as almost like a portal they're saying that you can see it as a doorway uh, an arch a portal perhaps of the past coming into the future or even the future going back to the past, right? These um, uh, understandings that we're having of our culture and, and the growth that um, these our indiv individuals are wanting to have um, with these motifs and, and uh, oral histories. Right. Yeah, so, what, a what a trick of the eye that is. If you have the privilege of sight, that's a real, it's really, it's, it boggles the mind a little bit. Normally there's a dumpster out front, but I'm glad that um, we don't have that. Yeah, we don't have to see that in this one today. Yeah, and speaking of uh, the live wires, like while they were painting, um, there's wires that go across the laneway there. And uh, a truck was coming through the laneway. It was too tall and it ended up knocking down the oh. wire. So we had to stall all the painting until uh, I guess BC Hydro came an hour or two later um so yeah it, you know it's uh all these different things that the artists have to be aware of like when we have the scissor lift to bring the artist up you know uh, a story to paint what are they going to be too close to and trying to work around that so um i think for this one uh the ceiling of this um the mural like what's the illusion of the ceiling there there were supposed to be rays of color kind of uh, extending throughout that entire upper portion. And they had, because of the live wires, they had to minimize how much mm. they were painting because, you know, we didn't want to risk their safety. Uh, they certainly didn't want to. So um, we kind of have to work around these kind of challenges that are on the walls sometimes. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. All right. Um, yeah, I think, I don't think we have anything else to add to that one, Jazz. We're ready to go to the next mural. Okay. Let's right. have Steph bring up the next image then. All right. So this uh, was painted in 2022 by artist Jesse Sopal. Um, and this mural is called Kohinoor, Where Are You? 
Um, Kohinoor is a, a very famous or infamous diamond, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, as we go further. Um, so this mural is entirely black and white. Uh, it's very geometric and symmetrical. Uh, this one's a little bit complicated, so bear with me. Hopefully uh, we explain this with enough detail here. Um, okay, so at the center, there's a black diamond shape with a circular pattern inside. On the left and right edges of the mural are the side profiles of turbaned men facing outwards. Um, and at first, when you see this mural, often when we do, you know, field trips, people don't see it right away. But um, at first, uh, when you first uh, look at it, it's hard to distinguish that they are faces because of the geometric style that they're painted in. Um, so the turban, the beard, the eye, and the nose are made up of thick black curved lines on a white background. So because this mural is so geometric, um, it's hard to distinguish those shapes until you uh, it finally clicks what they are. Uh, in between uh, the two men, there are two, uh, sorry, in between the diamond and the two men, there are two upside down triangles at the top of the mural and two triangles at the bottom of the mural. The triangle on the top left has the word Kohinoor written in English using thick black geometric lines on a white background. And the triangle on the top right has a pattern of white asterisks on a black background. So kind of repeating star shapes. Um, the triangle uh, on the bottom left also has these white asterisks on a black background. And the triangle on the bottom right has Kohinoor written in thick black lines. This time it's written in Gurmukhi script. Um, again, because of the geometric nature uh, of this mural, um, you kind of have to um, dissect it a little bit as you're looking at it to finally recognize the characters. Um, so the reason Jesse painted this, um, there's a, a history, uh, a deep history of uh, a stolen diamond from India um, called the Kohinoor. Uh, it was stolen from Maharaja Dulip Singh, who is a son of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Uh, it was, you know, he uh, Maharaja Dulip Singh was a young child when he was crowned and the British uh, kind of tricked him into giving it to them. This was the biggest diamond that had ever been found. Uh, and unfortunately, because it wasn't as, uh, you know, cut as beautifully as it could have been. Sorry, someone's just walking into my door right now. Um, hi, are the kids here too? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, bear with me. The kids might come in. There might be a little bit of noise, but uh, we'll, we'll get through it. Um, the, Kohinoor diamond uh, was cut down into smaller, a, you know, a small fraction of what it was originally so that it would display better, right? It, the light would hit it better, um, unfortunately, right? Uh, that's kind of the legacy of it. Um, interestingly enough, about two weeks after Jesse had finished painting this mural, Queen Elizabeth died. And so, you know, uh, lots of different uh, news organizations were interviewing Jesse at his mural, getting his take on it. And during the coronation, they made sure to remove, the, oh, sorry, I should have mentioned, uh, this crown was part of uh, Queen Elizabeth's, this diamond was part of her crown. During the coronation of King Charles, they made sure that that diamond was no longer on there because they knew it would stir up controversy. Uh, you know, India would want it back. Um, you know, this this diamond had come from different empires, the Mughal Empire. It had kind of changed hands. They knew it was controversial. Uh, instead of putting the Kohinoor diamond, they've put one now from, I think, Sierra, uh, where, uh, from another country. Was it Sierra Leone, Jazz? <laughs> yeah. Um, that's not controversial. That's not controversial. <laughs> that's not that's not been stolen, right? So yeah. it's unfortunate. They've kind of replaced one stolen artifact with another, yeah. but they have so many stolen goods that, yeah, yeah. Um, I think Jazz, you've mentioned on some of our tours that uh, there's, you know, lore that this diamond is cursed. Do you want to share share yeah. any of that? So it was in the research that we're doing during that time. 
that found out that um, perhaps the diamond was removed from the crown because it had said that any male heir who wears the diamond on their crown dies. So, yeah, perhaps that's also another reason why they want to include the diamond. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And, you know, the reason uh, England won't return it back to India their excuses. Well, we don't know who it belongs to. Do we give it back to India? Do we give it to Afghanistan? Who gets it? Who's the original owner? So they'll just, you know, keep it safe in the meantime. Yeah. How yeah. kind of them. How yeah. kind of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I think Jesse's mural and like I keep, uh, said mentioned as well that, you know, a lot of folks didn't know the history of the Cori nor the younger generations. And so by having it on in the mural and perhaps what happened at, the, at that time with the death and the curse and the history that came out, right? Folks started talking about it and younger generations became interested in, in it. And perhaps the elders started sharing stories of what they knew um, as well. So I feel like the murals are not only just part of the beautification project, but we're also trying to share a history as well through the murals as well and, and spark interest and, and, and joy as well to learn again. And similar to what Jag and I have both experienced of coming back to the market and wanting our practices to be more reflective of our culture and our identity as well. So I feel like this is a good example. And most importantly, to incorporate the Gurmukhi script in the murals as well, right? Reclaiming the language as well. That's also important work that we're trying to uh, continue as well. This is one of my, I have three favorites from this tour. I mean, I love them all, but I have three favorites from this tour and this is one of them. Um, actually, fun fact about me, not that this is about me. I uh, was a gemologist before I lost my sight. And so I was, I was grading diamonds. No so way. I, yeah, so I, I understand how to cut them, the crystallography of them, how to grade them. Yeah. Right, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going to uh, mute myself and I'm going to go set up in my office because the children are, the children are here. <laughs> are we able bedtime. to go on to the next mural? <laughs> yes, I'll let Jazz continue that one and I will come back shortly. Right. We can move on to the next one, Steph. Thank you. And see you and be back, Jake. Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you. So our next mural um, is... Uh, by Mohadesi Movad, and it's titled Uprising Sonata, and it was painted in 2023, so a more recent mural. The mural is painted on a tall and thin wall. It is set at nighttime and depicts a large lush green cypress tree at the center of the wall. The tree has three trunks that form one uh, form into one towards the top of the mural. In the upper right corner is a full moon, which is casting a soft light on the right side of the tree. The dark blue sky is speckled with white stars in the sky above the tree. In the foreground, um, oh, sorry, in the forefront of the scene is a broken brick wall. The staggered gray bricks are placed on the left and bottom of the mural, creating a 3D illusion as though the brick wall has just been broken, revealing the scene with the tree. In the background are silhouettes of mountains. Huh, that's interesting. I, I would not have got that. They look like Jenga blocks to me. Yeah. But I get it. It's like you're crashing through the wall, it's crumbled, and on the other side is this gorgeous piece of nature yes it's like you're going through that broken yeah. wall, the second space so talking about portals and entry points yeah. beautiful mural um this is also such one of the most meaningful murals um in the market as well and it was made in honor of our sisters and brothers in iran who stood up to the government during the women's life freedom movement in iran mm -hmm. and the Cypress tree um, became a symbol of the movement. And so Moadesi, that's why she chose to depict um, the cypress tree in her mural so prominently. 
Uh, rooted in Iranian culture, the cypress tree holds profound symbolism and the tree is extensively woven into traditional Iranian art, poetry, and garden design. So perhaps that's another reason why Modesi was drawn to the tree itself. Because the tree um, has existed for so long that it, and it's in its long it's the tree has a long lifespan and its ability to withstand harsh weather conditions have rendered it a symbol of resistance. So I think that's also a parallel um, symbolism that she wanted to use of resistance and endurance. And it's just as Iranian people have resisted the various forms of oppression throughout their country's history. In the mural, the unified and cohesive form of the tree at the top where the three uh, kind of trunks come together metaphorically represent a unity and references the collective effort of Iranian individuals and the intergenerational movement that happened um, in staying strong together to bring about change. The tree is placed in a desert-like environment, kind of replicating not only the terrain of Iran um, and that plateau in the arid and um, landscape, but it's also depicting the mountains in the background and, and the mountains also connect back to uh, Vancouver itself. So that's where the artist was trying uh, was trying to connect um, her home country with the country that she currently resides in. And the moon, I think, is one of my favorite symbols in this mural um, and, it, and because it embodies hope and change and and really let the resilience to continue on in these difficult times, you know, the moon provides light guidance and energy needed to navigate through these darkest circumstances. And it was under the cover of night that um, activists and individuals would write notes and uh, names on the brick walls of loved ones and messages to see um, who was still there and how and that's how they were communicating um, under this and that's probably one of the major themes that Moadesi was trying to pull and and the mean the connection that she felt uh, with the movement that was happening back home that's um quite the history that you're sharing yes, and not, not so uh, yeah not so unrecent history exactly yeah and this wasn't on the mural walk so um I mean I don't think we've spoken about this mural before no, it's a it's a bonus feature for those of us who were on the walk because we uh, didn't get to all of the murals. Um, so this is a, an extra one. And is there there's a person in this photo? Is that just somebody standing in front of the mural? That is the artist. Okay. In a white shirt and a grace um, skirt. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty impactful. I, something about this moon too for me. I, I kind of see symbol maybe symbolism maybe where there isn't any, but like as a global people, we're kind of all under the same moon, aren't we? Like I don't know. At the end of the day, we're more alike than we are different. And I just uh I think about that a lot when there are such conflicts around the world, and I just wanna, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, so what you just said. Sorry, Jens. No, go on. I was just gonna say that's so powerful what you just said, Amy. It's so true. It's I don't so even know how to articulate it. I just yeah. yeah. I feel it. I feel yeah. It. Well, thank yeah. you. This yeah. is a very strong mural in that sense, in the engagement and the pull that you feel. Mm -hmm. And now knowing the meaning behind the symbols of the tree yeah. and the wall and the moon, I think it's even more um mm -hmm. And that's also interesting, right? Like when you come across public art, sometimes you just see or you notice and, and you don't really get the full picture until mm -hmm. you learn or read. And so that's why I think having these tours and what you do um, in for the community is so important. It is one of the reasons why I love our, our tours, even what we do in this space when we have um, art from artists from different galleries and whatnot, that we get that curatorial artist perspective. We get to talk through like how it impacts you know, uh, us in the space, those kinds of things, because that brings so much, so many layers to me as somebody who doesn't, um, who can't, who can't maybe put all the pieces of the visuals together. Uh, so it makes me feel like I'm not necessarily left out of the mm. conversation. Exactly. Yeah. So I really appreciate that. What do, how do you all feel when you look at a mural like this? What does it bring up for you? 
Well, I, knowing that what I know and working with the artist, no, and I think, no, I think for me, every time I look at it and I know the artist practice really well and she's always fighting, you know, for her belief and her rights as well, that like, this is so powerful. Like it's such a simple design with brick wall, moon and cy cypress tree. It's universal in that fact, right? Like this could be carried on to other parts where disaster and genocide are happening and it could mean same, similar things or carry those um, symbolic moments as well. So I feel like to me, this mural is really important to have in Punjabi market as well uh, because we want to make these meaningful connections and support um, community members and individuals around the world. Um, it's just beautiful. And, and to name it, um, uprising sonata i felt that that was really interesting name choice as well because the uprising that was happening sonata being like could be a beautiful sound but it also could be not really nice to some folks as well depending on what you like your taste in music is so i think those two coming together as well um it adds a beautiful meaning jack yeah, I, you know, there's kind of the two parts to the mural, like you see this decaying, crumbling brick wall, but behind it, the scene is so peaceful, right? Like when I see it, I, I often when I stand by that mural, I feel like I am at that tree and it's a real tree. It, it's very realistic in the way it's been painted. So uh, I remember when she, I she was probably 70% done painting and we were standing across the street and I glanced over and kind of gasped at how realistic all the shapes were, right? The the textures on the tree and it just, the the way the shadows are cast on the ground from the tree trunks, it's just such a serene and quiet. I think that's what the sense I get. Um, and then the brick wall against that kind of just, mm. you start wondering like, what what is the story behind that, right? It's not just this peaceful oasis. And Moa Desi originally wanted to paint names or make scratch or markings on the um, brick wall, but with some of the regulations around what murals can have, mm -hmm. uh, we're not able to in uh, incorporate those. And, you know, we, the other part of that was we didn't want people to think this was already graffitied and they would come and add their tags to it, right, and uh, deface the whole mural. So uh, we decided to err on the you know, yep. side of caution for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably yeah, I love a good choice. It's too um too beautiful to mm -hmm. want to deface. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that that's hugely impactful. And I will never look at a cypress tree. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. She actually traveled to Turkey, I think, uh recently, a few weeks ago, and there was a photo she had posted on her Instagram of a cypress tree. And I messaged her saying, Oh, that looks like your your mural. Um, so it, yeah, it was cool to see her posting about it in real life as well. Ooh, right. Okay. So we have one, one more, more. we're going to talk about today. Bring that and one people, yeah. And if people are keeping track, this is the third pe peacock that we're going to talk third about. Peacock. Yes. Uh, so this is actually our biggest mural that we have. Um, in Punjabi market. Uh, it's painted by artist Sanroop Kaur. This was painted last summer during the heat wave, similar weather to what we have now. Uh, and this is titled Moor, which is how you say peacock in Punjabi. Um, so as I said, this is the largest mural. It actually starts eight feet off the ground. Um, so because there's uh, doorways to the restaurant, um, it's also on the back of Himalaya restaurant. Um, it's about, uh, three stories high. Um, so on this mural, uh, it's a side view of a large colorful peacock perched on a tree branch. One of its feet is lifted up, um, kind of, uh, mid step and the peacock is facing to the right. Uh, its feathers are vibrant with shades of green, blue, and yellow, and it's painted in a very realistic style. So when you uh, see it, it kind of looks um, if, as though it has texture, as though it would be soft, similar to what a real peacock feather would be. Um, the background is a light blue, has a light blue sky with a mountain range in the background. Uh, there are branches with white cherry blossom flowers. 
to the left side on the left side of the mural. And in the top center above the peacock is a pink circular sun. It's quite a deep pink color. And so the concept behind this uh, mural, um, again, this is painted on the back of Himalaya restaurant. So uh, in conversations with Manny, uh, one of the owners of the restaurant, uh, he wanted to pay homage to the restaurant. So she's painted this mountain range in the background, which could you know, uh, tie into our Vancouver coast mountains or the Himalayan mountains in India, which are very prominent. Um, so it's kind of, uh, you know, how you want to interpret it is up to each, each person. Um, the peacock is a cultural placeholder and a metaphor for the South Asian diaspora. Uh, and the cherry blossoms and mountains provide a visual link to the landscape here in Vancouver. Uh, this mural is quite striking. Um, we have a photo that, uh, so our, our, uh, we had someone helping paint the murals last year. Um, his name is Mayurish. He is a mural expert. So he was helping with all the logistics and uh, physically helping the artist paint as well. He took some drone footage of this mural and to to see this photo, like you can see the um, streetscape and then how high the mural sits. Um, it, it's quite striking. It's a, it's Manny says it's the best mural in Punjabi mm -hmm. market. You might be biased because it's on his yeah. wall, but it and is it, it, yeah. No, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Just the way it's been painted is so uh, realistic, but it also jazz. Well, I don't know. You're better at knowing what kind of uh, art era. This is kind of like pays homage to an older style of painting, like from, I don't know, from when, 100, 200 years ago? I don't know. Similar to like the Mughal kind of empire of peacock and wealth, right? And that's why these rich jewel tone colors um, are, are used in depicting the peacock as well. Um, and it's really fascinating because like the peacock is so beautiful, especially when it, when he, the male peacock opens the feathers up and um, the attraction that you get. So I feel like having this like super sized peacock <laughs> on the side of a building is not only paying homage to like the, that South Asian tradition, but of empire, but of also like belonging and beauty. And um, it really this mural, I think, really helps to tie in a lot of the other elements, the historical elements, but also the contemporary elements that are in the murals and it's a really great piece to talk about through like the symbolism of the cherry blossoms like Jag said connecting to the landscape here and the mountains and, and Sunroop the artist lives in in California um, and in Vancouver so for her it was really important to pay homage to that land and the journey that our um, ancestors have taken from other lands to come to Punjabi market um, as well. If this is probably yes, it is the largest mural, but it in the sh in shape wise, it's like the simplest. You have a central peacock, you have a sun and a mountain range, but the components together at this very large scale, I think, create something very monumental and beautiful and overwhelming at times, as well. But so, um, I have an uh, ignorant question: Are there actually peacocks in regions of India? Yes. Yeah, it's a no, national bird. Yeah, it is. National okay. Uh, I just learned something new. I did not know that. So that's why um, it's such a prominent symbol. And, yeah. And so like Jazz mentioned, three of the murals have peacocks. Yeah. Incidentally, right? But it just, uh, it happens. It's such a big part of like symbolism and art. Um, and actually, I don't know if you had heard, like, wasn't there in Surrey? Yes. A few years ago, there were peacocks that were wreaking havoc on like these luxury cars. Oh, yeah. They were see their own reflection and attack these like Lamborghinis and everything. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have had you not mentioned it, but I yeah. do know. Yeah. yeah. And then what's the symbolism of a pink sun? So, right. uh, oh, Daz, you can talk about the bindi, right? Is that? Ah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Could be thought of as the bindi, which is um, an adornment that traditional married women wear. But for sunroop, it is like that nostalgic sunset kind of like yeah, um, sunset taking coming into place. Yeah. And for those who don't know, a bindi yeah. is kind of a, um, imagine like a little sticker you put on your forehead between your eyebrows, a little bit higher than your eyebrows. Um, often, you know, brides will wear it, or even if you know. In, you and I are going to a reception party or a wedding. We might uh, put one on ourselves on our foreheads. And so, so very odd as well. 
<clears throat> Jazz, you just said that it symbolizes uh, a woman who's married, or is there a greater symbolism to that? Traditionally, uh, women who were married would wear a bindi. So that would signal to the other men back yeah. off married? Yeah. Yeah. But also uh, because it's adorned by women, it's also symbolic of like, the third eye. So the next right. the intuition um, going forward. But I, yeah, I feel like being centrally placed above the peak of the mountain in the center of this mural really alludes to that. But I think also the artist was really saying that, yeah, it's like a time of day, a place mm -hmm. as well. Perhaps when the peacock is going to rest now, right? From fanning its feathers and being all macho for most of the day. <laughs> Back off, peacock. <laughs> and something I only learned maybe, you know, uh, a few years ago, maybe. Uh, it's the male peacocks who have these beautiful colors and feathers. Yeah, the peahens are ugly. They need, to, they need to show off to, you know, when they're courting the women. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, the peahens are not such a pretty looking bird right, right. Oh. Oh. um awesome mm. awesome yeah. this is awesome this is one of my top three Ooh. Mm -hmm. and uh the one with the uh the salmon yes, yes. Yeah. yeah yeah and it's what's great is i guess uh steph we can take these uh that picture off now i think um what's great about the murals is if people don't already know about Punjabi market and they're, you know, driving past and see one of the murals, they that's a great way to bring them into the neighborhood. Um, a lot of young folks come specifically to take photos, Instagram videos or TikTok dance videos, right? Like they're doing all these things to post on social media. So we kind of have given them a backdrop of sorts, but it's more to help promote the businesses, bring foot traffic back into this neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, that was facing decline. And how do we get people to remember it again? Or like, you know, Jazz and I didn't, had come as children, but we hadn't stepped foot probably for 10, 15 years um, as adults. So how do we bring people back? Is, and as is you that... walk through the neighborhood and you look at the murals, you're like, oh, look, a nice little store. Maybe I'll go in, you know? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Or you, you smell something and you're like, ooh, I wouldn't try that deliciousness. Yeah, yeah right. Well, we did that. Yeah, um, we did. Yes. <laughs> which, was, which was delightful. It was a really lovely day. It sprinkled rain very lightly at the top of the day. And I thought, uh oh. But mm -hmm. the rain went away and we had a delightful, a delightful day, the group of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, that was probably one of our favorite tours. We were we've we've talked about it a few times since. Uh, and, you know, we'd love to do more, uh, you know, next year, have another walking yeah. tour. Um, it's just, we love talking about Punjabi market and the art and I like yeah. talking, we like talking in general. So how, how is it for the two of you to uh, integrate description into the, the tour? Um, I mean, I think there was a learning curve there for us because we haven't thought about how to break down what's physically painted before and describe it. So um, yeah, we we had a great support from Steph who read over our script and uh, provided insights on, you know, how to make it more clear. Um, so yeah, definitely a learning curve. But I think the more we describe them, the more practice we get, I think that will come second nature, similar to the way the concepts we, we know, you know, like the back of our hands. Um, and I think that describing things will come to us the more we do it as well I know, did you go ahead jess i was just gonna say i know for me you know i, I think because i was so involved in the murals like working with the artists and the landlords and going back and forth with concept designs i really didn't sit with the images until this happened and so i was like oh yeah that's like a star shape yeah. or a fan shape right um and so that's what really stood out to me um and really now i have a better appreciation of the murals, the shapes, the motifs, um, and the works that the artists did. Like these murals were made in like seven days. Um, mm -hmm. so a testament to the artists and the profession and how amazing they are and steadfast in, in their practices. Yeah, and actually yesterday uh, we went to Port Moody and by the parking lot there was a mural and I started, without even realizing it, I started <laughs> Look, like describing it to myself like here's this one you know like I can't it's gonna be in your head now and you just oh. everything you look at you're gonna be like how would I describe that exactly. yeah. huh. 
Um, awesome. I, I just want to remind folks in our uh, Zoom audience that uh, Jazz and Jag are here to hear any feedback, to answer any questions. If you want to share comments, if you were at the walking tour and you want to share that with the group, please uh, use the raise your hand function. It's the easiest thing. If you don't have access to that, just come on in. Um, but we're uh, we're here to hear your thoughts and comments and take your questions. So that is an open offer, friends, as always. And uh, oh, my hand already. Oh, my hand already. <laughs> it is. It's Megan. Come on in, Megan. And then after Megan, we've got Anu. That was awesome to me. Now, that reminded me of another place I went to in Vancouver called Little India. Is that the same place or is it a different, different area? Because there's two markets like that. It's Mojave Market and Little India. Um, um, on Fraser? Is that what you're... Yeah. I think that's what with Little India. Like it's, like it's a small market. It's not really a store, but it has little shops. It has saris and everything in it. I think it is on Fraser, but it's a different one. That's kind of cool. Um, what Sky Train station is it nearby? Oh, uh, the Lang. Uh, I think it's called Langara Sky Train. Langara Forty Nine. Yeah, yeah. Candle Line Station. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I've never been to Punjabi Market. I should. I should do that with my mom. I've been to Little India, but never Punjabi Market. I don't think. I might yeah. have. I don't remember. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, or if it's been so long that you don't remember, come, come down. There's, you know, yeah. lots of uh, fabric stores. I think uh, some folks from after after we did our tour and after we had lunch went into, you know, shopping for clothes. Um, it's I feel like everyone is so hospitable there. And that was one thing Diamond Point actually mentioned, how hospitable everyone was. Everyone was saying, do you want us to bring you a mango lassi? It's so hot. Do you want anything? So the community is very welcoming. So I, I, you know, like if you visit any of the shops, mention that you did a mural tour with us and um, they, they love to talk about. If the market's open seven days a week. The shops, um, well, okay. was, except tra traditionally on Tuesday, most of the shops are closed. Um, but yeah, just you can walk down and enjoy everything that's happening. And so if I were doing a sweet, I have to eat something soft. If I were doing um, sweets for sweets, what would be the softest sweet for me? Oh, I think the glob jamun, spongy. Okay. I would go. I yeah. would go for the mango lassi. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. instant ice in your chest. It's, it's yeah. It's a it's a beverage, but it's kind of like a thick mango smoothie kind of thing. Okay, so I did actually try once in Kelowna. There was this um sweet. I don't know what it's called, but it was little little, little, little sugar balls. It was really really soft, and it was in a bowl. Oh, okay. I don't know. What, I don't know what it was called though. You know what? If you if you go into any of the restaurants like Himalaya or any of the others, just ask them, and they'll they'll especially with all the sweets in Himalaya, they'll recommend what's you know. Um, okay. uh, and what what pudding? I know that I, I had the coconut rice pudding. I have that a lot when I go to Indian restaurant. What yeah. other soft you know pu um, pudding? Like do they make our pudding? Are that more British or is it like a yeah yeah? Well, like they said, Megan, just when you're in the restaurants, ask them because they know. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Next time you're in Vancouver, you should check out the All market. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Um, okay, friends, we had a new, but I don't... yes, I'm here. Oh, you're here. Okay, I'm, I'm here. still here. Yes. Um, well, it's more of a comment. Um, so, ladies, thank you so much for sharing this beautiful work um, with the. <laughs> with our community. Uh, this is my first time actually attending a Vocali event, like a virtual event. And um, I, I, what I wanted to say actually is, is really brought back memories of um, going to Main Street and Punjabi Market as a child. And um, a lot of what we are talking about, like with the, the community, you know, the hospitality and, and it really was a sense of community um, in those days. And, and I'm really um, happy to hear that what, what Punjabi Collective is doing to, to bring back um, that vibrancy to, to this neighborhood because it, um, yeah, it was just, I think it's just like one of those places um, that I can't even put into words really because I think it was like at that time, it was something that we just, we just did every weekend. I think most, but many families, you know, that that's what that, that was a thing to do is go to Main Street on the weekend, do our shopping and, 
um, have something to eat and meet other people from the community. And so I just kind of was a little bit nostalgic, you know, um, to, to listen to you both. And so I just wanted to say thank you for all the work you're doing. And um, yeah, thanks for sharing. Thank you so much, Anu. Yeah, it's really nice to have you in the space. You should join us more often. I definitely will. I definitely will. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, let's go to Nancy next. Um, somebody's got their uh, sound on and there's some background noise. I wonder if you can just mute yourself if you do, because it's uh, inter it's blocking the noise, uh, the sound for us talking. I think that's ours because Christy had her hand up and it's this latest update has completely destroyed the control of the iPad. So I got the mute going while I had it. So <laughs> Go inside, Sean. I'll try. And, I'll try. and, and we will mute. Uh, if, yeah, we've just got kids in the background, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Nancy. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Just hang on, Nancy. Now we're listening to John's screen reader. Can you hear me? Just hang on, Nancy. Can you hear me now? Nancy, just hang on a second, okay? Okay, yeah, go ahead now. Now we got gotcha. you. Uh, okay, now can you hear me? I'd like yes. to say thank you. You guys brought back memories because I got married in 1983 and I had to go to Main Street. We live in Victoria and all my jewelries, all my wedding, I had eight bridesmaids. I had to get suits for them. We had to get remalls for their head. My parents had to, my dad, my mom had to make and all the barfies and ladus had to get delivered to Victoria. And I would love to go see the mirror. But every time when we go shopping, they're always shut down on Wednesdays or Tuesdays. And it would always ruin my day because we'd come on the ferry. So we had to spend the night. But having the mirror, I would like to see it. But is it, I know you guys described it today, but it Main Street, someone there to be open all the time to say where they are? Uh, for the actual murals? Yeah, the mirror, yeah, because I know they're, I know Pavla because that's the relatives of ours, and we always go to their restaurant for go guppy. And is it uh, behind his building, or is on? Because I know the windows are on the side. Is everything at the back? So the peacock mural is at the back where the parking okay. lot is. Uh, Sandeep's mural uh, with the suites that's on the side. So where the side, uh, it's on fiftieth where all the windows are. It's at the back, so towards the back of. Uh, so it's only on one side, on Pablo's side, right? Because across the street where we got our, our I know it's, it's dead now, but it, um, we used to get our wedding cards there and we always go there all the time. I yeah. brought all my dresses there and it just brought back, you know, meeting with families and, you know, the whole block was shut down. The police had to control the traffic and, oh my God, it, you know, like now I take my daughter and she got all her stuff in Surrey, but I want to get one dress in, in Main Street just to remember that I, my wedding was here, my jewelry and everything every, from head to toe, we had to get in on Main Street because it was close. That's the only thing was open, right? Yeah. Oh, Nancy, and, that's so know, sweet. That's so lovely to hear your connection to the market. Yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. And, oh, and hiding my hair. And you had to wear a suit. We always wanted to wear English suit because, oh my God, we're good on the ferry. People are going to laugh at us. But you know what? When, once you come on Main Street, we quickly put on our East Indian outfits and just wanted to be like them. <laughs> and now I live in Burnaby. I have no one to take me down there. When was I want the to get chalk. When you know, was the last time you were down there, Nancy? I'm just going to say um, five years ago before my mom passed away. If she passed away four years ago, I, I went down there. I wanted to get an outfit for a wedding and my girlfriend, a Gordy girlfriend wanted a suit to wear, actually for my daughter's wedding. And she wanted something bright. So the lady said, how about a yellow one? And she, oh my gosh, she got white. Oh no, it's not gonna look good, but everyone loved it. She went down the street, they alternate for her. We bought it that day, three out, three, three, a suit and the scarf and oh my god she looked beautiful. And and then I went back again to get my grocery because when you make these dinner food, it's beautiful. And my favorite East Indian food is the ladu, the barfi that has a silver thing on top. Yeah. Remember? Mm. They, it's, they have a, a tin foil on top. That's my favorite. And basin. Yeah. Both flowers. And my mom always made. Yeah. And remember those, I don't know how to say it in the East Indian, but it's got carrots it, and it put icing sugar on top. Icing, but it's red, dark red. And oh my God, it's like a carrot. It's something to do with carrots. But it's got that red color to it. Like you talked about that root, that root color that you're saying. 
And we always do that at wedding time. Is it gajarilla? Yes. Oh, my God. That's it. You did it. Oh, you hit it. Oh, Nancy. I can eat all that. Oh, sorry. My son's in here. Nancy, when you... Oh, sorry. Uh, wants to say hi to everybody. Um, Nancy, when you... Can we make a plan? And I can give you... Uh, like, I'd love to give you a tour of Punjabi market and show you like I can take you to the murals and take you into some of the oh, shops and I'd, I'd like, like to hear yeah. more of your stories and uh yeah there's so much history there I feel like yeah because I'm going to tell you something I'm sorry quick quickly say it my baba my great-grandfather was the first to come from India and they, there was a boat in, in in the ocean in Vancouver and he came and got all the mills together and put everyone where they had to go and then my great-grandfather was the first East Indian guy to vote for the ladies to vote in East in, in in Canada to voting. So we're we're well known in Victoria and everyone on Main Street. I want to go shopping, not talking. <laughs> and we always got to. It, it takes us all day to shop from six o'clock, get on the ferry for seven o'clock, and and time and time to get home. I go. All we did is talk, talk, talk. I didn't get to go shopping. <laughs> Well, I would love to. Maybe, uh, Amy, we can like if if Nancy are comfortable with that. Like, oh, I'd love to. I'd my, love to. Yeah, let's yeah. let's meet up yeah. one day. Beautiful. Yes, I'd love happy. to do that. I'd love to have a chat with you. Yeah, and I'll be And I'll buy. <laughs> Thanks for sharing all of that, Nancy. It was lovely to listen to. I think. Thank you. It happens to us too when Jagan are in the market. <laughs> um, <laughs> go for a task or like a project but then we end up talking to like the aunties and uncles who are walking by or yeah, yeah. that we've seen we we're like no we're here for another reason too ah. <laughs> so you go there for like 30 minutes but you're there for four hours pretty much yeah 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah i gotcha that, that also resonates as kind of an italian thing that uh -huh. i would that would happen in an italian community where you would go into an italian grocery store just to grab something and four hours later you're still there yeah, and it takes twenty minutes to say bye to everyone. That's right. You got it. Yeah, even your hairdresser. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. Okay, let's do Sean and Christy, and then Faye, which we know is going to be Christy. <laughs> and now Sean has to figure out how to unmute with the new Zoom with the new Zoom updates. Oh, poor Sean. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think we can unmute for them, could we? I no. Yeah. Nope, that's a Zoom protected feature. Okay. So you can't spy on folks. Maybe we'll, uh, watch, I always do this. Maybe we'll go to Faye uh, while we're waiting for Sean to unmute. So Faye, why don't you come on in? Hi. Hi. It, it was really done beautifully, and it was such a good education for me. Oh, thank you so much. Did you have a favorite mural, Faye? Well, they all seemed gorgeous. You know, mm -hmm. it would be kind of, I see a little bit, it would be kind of nice even to walk through there. Like to me, it was such an education. Maybe I can go with Nancy. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, it definitely. sounds like you got to like rent a van and go pick people up and bring them to the market. <laughs> I, you know, I don't need to rent one. I have a minivan. I'm a proud, ah, of course. proud <laughs> minivan mom. So I give me your addresses. I'll pick you up and we'll go not on a Tuesday, but we'll go no. on a road trip. to. I love that. Road yeah. trip. Yeah. Road trip. <laughs> okay. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Faye. Thanks, Faye. All right, let's see if Sean has uh, figured out how to unmute yet. Actually, we forgot. you mentioned that, um, yeah, most of the murals are actually in the alleyways. So. Okay, I think we got it. Oh, yeah, hey, hey. yeah, we got gotcha. you. We can come back to that thought in a minute, Jazz. This latest update is horrendous for accessibility. Okay. <laughs> um, Where was I? Okay. So, number one, um, I appreciated this Zoom presentation because on the day of the tour, it was kind of hard for me to hear with all the traffic. Mm -hmm. So, I liked hearing the descriptions over again. Um, uh, the other thing is, um, I have my grandma's gold bracelets. So, that's what that first mural um, with the bangles reminded me of, is my grandma's gold bracelets. Um, that she inherited. It has gold from her mother. Um, yeah. So, uh, and, and my great-grandmother came from India. So, 
Um, and I guess the third thing is, I guess Jazz and Jag have been, I don't know who's been following who, but we've seen Jazz and Jag, Sean and I, uh, a lot during the Indian Summer Festival, and it was really nice. Um, thanks for coming up and identifying yourself and engaging with us, and I guess we'll see you in New West on Saturday for yes. your, um, your sensory experience of Blind Beginnings. Yes, this has been my summer of Sean and Christy, so I'm very happy. Yeah, we've, we've seen you so many times in the last few weeks. It's been great. Yeah, and, and thank you for, for staring me towards my really beautiful dress that everybody loves, and I love it too. <laughs> You look beautiful. Thank you. Why don't you, um, Jag, why don't you tell folks what you're doing with your sensory art project? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so this Saturday in New West, um, there is a outdoor plaza, Uptown Plaza on Belmont and 6th Street. Um, doing a art workshop, um, a tactile art workshop. So I've partnered with Blind Beginnings and New West Arts Council. Um, we're going to be making uh, art that is uh, like the shape of a butterfly uh, using, and we're gonna decorate them using different materials that have different textures. Um, it's gonna have, uh, you know, what we wanted to do with this was how can folks uh, with partial or complete sight loss still make art, right? And um, it, I, I'm really excited about it. We're going to add uh, bells for sound to it. Um, we can add essential oils for scent. So all your senses will kind of be uh, working on this project. So I'm really excited. You don't need to be an artist to come to the workshop. Um, what? Okay, so, you know, when we talk about public art and these murals, um, what I love most about it is that we can make it Accessible. You don't need to go to a gallery or a museum to see art or to experience it. You don't have to pay a fee. Yeah. You don't have to pay a fee. So what's great, especially with this Vocali um, collaboration we've been able to do, is make that public art even more accessible to folks who can't see it, mm. but they can take it in. And so uh, that's you know a huge part of um, a huge. Uh, it means a lot to me to be able to make art accessible. So that's what I'm excited about you know, with these butterflies. Um, Blind Beginnings logo is a butterfly. So that's where we got the inspiration from it. Um, and yeah, so often when people find out I'm an artist and ask me what I do, one of the most common things people say to me is, oh, I don't have a creative bone in my body. And I wanna try to dismantle that. You don't need to be an artist to be able to do this workshop and go home with something beautiful. Um, everything is uh, kind of pre-cut. Um, it's uh, self-adhesive, so it, it's, you know, stick and peel and you can decorate your butterflies. So we're all going to have something similar but unique to what we're making. Um, it's free to attend. Uh, it's from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we're going to have live music and, you know, every, it's going to be open to the community as well. So even if someone's walking by, they can come uh, make some art with us. Awesome. So you don't have to register. You just got to show up. To show up, yeah, 11 to 2. Uh, it's called Uptown Plaza in New West. So, um, Belmont and sit. Find out where that is and come say hi. And I'll, I'll be there to greet everybody. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. You are a couple of busy humans. Cool. Yes, I suppose we are. <laughs> yeah. Busy humans. Uh, and then what's what's happening for the rest of the summer? Anything you want to share? Doesn't have to be blind related, but anything you want to share? Oh, um, as a collective, uh, we're going to be doing some research visits. So we mentioned like different areas in the city that were part of the South Asian community, like in Kitsilano, for example. So we're going to do, we both have never been to the site where the first Godwara or temple was. So we're going to be doing a visit there and we're hoping to get over to the island um, in the Cowichan Valley to a town called Baldi which was one of the first lumber sites and um, multicultural kind of um, developments that happened there and I feel like those histories that Jag and I and the collective and younger generations are rediscovering and being, bring even more meaning to the work that we do and really like wanting to preserve that history and <laughs> The top of the uh, when we first started, Jake said that you know we don't want Punjabi market to 
be a plaque <laughs> that we really want to see what is happening in the market. So, are there plans for any other murals in the market? Ooh, good question. Um, not this year, but definitely we'll be working towards that for next year. Funding is always a fun, fun fact. <laughs> yes, indeed. Funding is always a fun fact. And not to get political, but if our government changes, it'll be even harder. <laughs> to yeah. get funding. So get out there and vote, folks. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you for bringing this back to our uh, almost live space and uh keep keep doing the good work this is important work um both from an accessibility perspective but from a um a, an honoring of community and culture um as somebody who is uh, you know as i always say i have no culture i'm as white as white comes mm -hmm. um i love listening to folks share culture because a part of me secretly is like i want that like i i just i want to be a part of I want to be a part of other people's culture so bad. I'm, I'm a, I'm an imposter. I have imposter syndrome, but I, like you talk about these, these richnesses so beautifully. Um, and that's not to um, diminish the atrocities that have happened. I just, uh, you, you um, share such lovely memories of family and, and culture and, and I don't have those. Um, so uh, thank you for enriching my life in that way. And for educating us in this space tonight. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor. And yeah, we'd love to continue uh, working with you folks. And, you know, uh, Jazz and I have talked in future when we do tours, like, can we make them themes? So maybe we go into a fabric shop, textiles and experience those or go mm -hmm. into, you know, uh, into Punjab Food Center where the spices are. So um, there's different ways I think we can continue building out our tours. So they're more sensory based, perhaps or something. But I think yeah, I, we'd love to just keep working together. This is so great. I mean, you found a new family. <laughs> yeah. And thanks to everyone who stayed Thank with you. us, uh, who either came on the walking tour or came here tonight. Um, it's uh, a joy to to share our stories with you all. Thank you. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. Oh, uh, with that, I guess we'll wish you a lovely evening. Um, and I hope that uh, I hope that you stay cool because it's just going to get warmer, I think. But uh, find a way to to keep cool. Yes. Thank you so much, Hi, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye. Vocal Eye, Vocal Eye.ca. Special thanks to our funders, the Canada Council for the Arts, the British Columbia Arts Council, the Province of British Columbia, and the City of Vancouver.